It is the lifeblood of humanity, and it is in short supply. I'm talking about water. A new UN report has revealed the scale of water scarcity across the world on this World Water Day. A special United Nations conference is underway in New York, the first in more than four decades to focus on H2O. It's being billed as a once-in-a-generation chance to tackle a worsening crisis as UN figures reveal billions across the globe do not have reliable access to clean water. And if urgent action is not taken, the situation could spiral further out of control. Cracked land and dried out trees. Drought is becoming a devastating reality all over the world. Increasing temperatures are having a major impact, making it more and more difficult for people to access clean water. We see people that need to travel long distances to get access to some supplies. And of course, the quality of the supplies is being also challenged. So we see people that cannot access uh, safe water in many, many areas. Currently, around 2 billion people globally, quarter of the world's population, do not have access to safe drinking water. It's a number that's likely to rise without a boost in international cooperation, the UN has warned in a report released today. Lack of water is causing severe risks to livelihoods, damaging food security, and it's also having an impact on health. Almost half of the global population lacks access to safe sanitation. So without water, there is absolutely no health. And a lot of that actually has caused that water contamination, if they are even able to get any sort of water, is because of poor sanitation. Failing access to clean water and sanitation is a global problem, according to experts. But it is the countries most vulnerable to climate change in Africa and Asia that are some of the worst impacted. The UN aims to ensure access to water and sanitation for all by 2030, but progress is falling behind. We would have to do four times as much as far as financial investments, infrastructure improvements and everything else. So clearly there is, you know, I would say a catastrophic um, neglect for water and sanitation. As governments meet to discuss the water crisis at a summit this week, the UN will be looking to turn that neglect into commitments that flow into action. Well, I'm joined now by Naho Miramachi from King's College London. She is a professor in environmental politics with a special focus on the world's water problems. Professor, it's good to have you with us. I, I want to start by highlighting a, a couple of figures here. Um, agriculture accounts for 70 percent of the world's fresh water use and the demand for agricultural products water is expected to grow by 50 percent in the next 25 years. If we could reduce that demand, that use radically, would we be able to solve all of the world's water problems? I wish we could say yes, um, but there's a growing number of people on this planet. We're due to hit over 9 billion people in just a couple of years. And so with developing economies as well, people's diets are changing. People are having more material lifestyles as well. So there is definitely more demand and just dealing with agriculture might also miss out the issues of sanitation as your reporting just mm -hmm. said as well. So it's a multi-pronged approach that we really need to take. You have made the case for a human rights-based approach to water. What do you mean by that? So states are duty bearers in the sense that they have responsibilities to their citizens to respect, to protect and fulfill rights in the case of water, the right to drinking water and the right to sanitation. And citizens as right holders can claim those rights. And a human rights based approach will give sharp focus to those who are marginalized, to those who are vulnerable, these individuals and communities into better focus. So states can't just pick and choose who to give clean water to or who to give sanitation to. The human rights based approach will really enable a much more equitable approach. Yeah, I think everyone would agree that um, everyone should have access to clean drinking water. The UN has set a goal by 2030 to, to have clean water and sanitation accessible to everyone. It also says, however, that it would cost hundreds of millions, or billions rather, every year to reach that goal. Um, it just doesn't sound realistic considering the world's financial reality, or, or am I seeing that incorrectly? 
Well, we are in a bit of an economic pinch in, in many economies, uh, I, I fully agree. But the key thing with water is that it links so many other important sustainable development goals, like reducing poverty, like zero hunger, like clean energy, like climate action, also to peace and justice. So if we can really get this bit of water right, there are lots of dividends, lots of payoffs in other sectors as well. So I think it is worth investing in water. Water and not letting it be neglected as we've done in the past. This this UN Water Security Conference, I understand, is is the first in almost half a century. So for the past 50 years, basically, we haven't thought a lot about water. Um, maybe that's been part of the problem. Are you convinced now that world leaders are thinking about water and how precious it is when they're making policy decisions? It definitely has to be part of the political agenda. I think political leaders need to really wake up to the urgency and the crisis that is happening at different parts of the world. It's not just in wealthy economies. It's also um, in places where there are climate change impacts that are happening right here and right now. And so I think the urgency is gradually um, coming to the fore, fore heads of people's minds. What we now do and take decisive action really is uh, an approach that governments, businesses, and local communities must take in conjunction. Not one actor can do this alone. Yeah, that's true. And this really is a matter of life and death. We certainly can't live without water. Professor Nahum Miramachi from King's College London, we appreciate your time and your insights tonight. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, one way to handle water shortages is pretty obvious, recycling. With the technological advances in water recycling, the water that goes down your sink, your drain this morning, it might be coming back out of the tap sooner than you think. The city of Los Angeles in the U.S. is looking into what is known as direct potable reuse, which means putting purified recycled water directly back into our drinking water systems. DW's Enos Pohl reports tonight from L.A. California is facing its worst droughts in recorded history, despite the rain in recent weeks. Used water has gone from waste to a precious resource. The challenge is to make this drinkable again. It's important that we make good use to recycle the wastewater. So we're trying to be independent and um, utilize the water that we have to its most optimal uh, level. The wastewater goes through multiple steps to be treated for drinking. We can start from the beginning. We have two main sewers that feed the treatment plant. And you're gonna see the debris, actually what we catch first. Yeah. Uh, we do that so it doesn't impede the equipment down, downstream. So, so we have- kind of clean the rough. We gotta clean up, we kinda clean those rags and the debris, whatever comes in the sewer. Anything that you flush down the toilet, anything that can go down to the sink, food waste, papers, rags, even found people are managed to get in the toilet, like toys come in. It takes five further steps before the water reaches a quality in which it can be sent back to rivers or be used for agricultural purposes. Disneyland is even using it to flush toilets. To reach drinking quality, further treatment is needed. After the conventional treatment, the water receives advanced treatment. That consists of microfiltration, reverse osmosis, and an advanced oxidation process. We're accelerating what would normally happen through filtration in nature. By the end of 2024, we'll be utilizing 100%. Um, elsewhere throughout the city of Los Angeles, we have uh, other goals like by 2035, all of the water will be uh, reused. Some, but not all of it, as drinking water. So just thinking back what I saw a couple of hours ago, and this is how it looks like now, so I'll give it a try. Perfect. Cheers. Cheers.